some conversion calculations. I think this is probably as hard as T's can go. So if you can tackle these questions, then you should be okay for any conversion calculations on T's for these uh, concentration units. All right, now let's look at the first one. So you're converting kilogram per liter to PPT. Now you do need to remember PPT parts per thousand, right? Is one gram per kilogram or one gram per liter. And that's because one liter of water is one kilogram. So you could you know, convert um, this weight-based unit to a volume based unit and they're the same. So now your goal is to convert this number to something based on gram per liter. So for 0.2 kilogram per liter, now you just need to convert this number in kilogram to gram. And then you have a gram per liter, which is a PPT. So you are converting from kilogram to gram, and that's from a large unit to a small unit, right? And remember I said previously, when you convert from large to small, you multiply the conversion factor, which is a thousand. So 0 0.2 times a thousand, that will be gram per liter, and that's 200 gram per liter, and that's PPT, right? So the correct answer is 200 PPT. Now the second one, PPM, so that's parts per million. And remember that's one milligram per kilogram or one milligram per liter. So similar to the previous answer, you just need to convert this number in gram to a number in milligram, right? Now you know that one gram is a thousand milligram. Now you're converting from large, oops. and again, you're converting from large to small, right? From gram to milligram. So you are going to multiply the conversion factor, which is a thousand, right? One gram is 1000 milligram. So that will be 6.5 gram per liter equals 6.5 times a thousand. And that will be the number in milligram per liter, right? So that's a six, five, hundred. And milligram per liter, that's PPM. So the correct answer is 6,500. Okay, the last one, this is, what, this is going backwards. So now you know you have a 9.9 .9 PPB and you're converting, and you're converting that to milligram per liter. And you know milligram per liter is PPM. And from PPB to PPM, that's a thousand times higher. So one PPM equals a thousand PPB. So the conversion factor is a thousand. Um, but in this case, you are converting from a small unit to a large unit, right? When you do small to large, you divide by the conversion factor, right, which is a thousand. So in this case, you are going to divide 9.9 .9 by a thousand. That will be PPM. If you divide the number by a thousand, you just move the decimal place to the left three times, right? One, two, three. And then you fill that with zeros. So the correct answer is 0 0.0099. There you go. So that's the correct answer. Okay, the last topic is osmosis and diffusion. And like I mentioned before, there uh, is a video specifically for osmosis and diffusion. So you can uh, use that video to get familiar with this topic. Now there's a one thing that's new, um, it wasn't a focus in T6, is active transport. And that's why I, I put it here to kind of get your attention. Active transport is a process of substance movement that requires energy because the substances, the molecules, move from low concentration to a higher concentration area, right? They're going against the concentration gradient. So think about you going up 
the hill go against gravity, or when you are in a creek, in a stream, in a river, you are going against the current, right? You have to put in the work. So that's why active transport is a process that requires energy. And it's the opposite of a passive transport. So active transport goes from low concentration to high concentration, right? Going against concentration gradients requires energy. Passive transport on the other side, on the other hand, molecules move from high to low concentration, right? And it does not require energy. Energy not needed. All right, um, so far I haven't seen a specific question on just active transport, but um, this is um, important information you need to know in case you see a question on T's. Now I do have some practice questions. So this question is about moisture. Moisture moves from the meat into the salt. So moisture is water. And we're talking about the movement of water molecules. And this is about osmosis. Uh, osmosis is a process that's specifically about water movement. So it's different than diffusion. Diffusion refers to the movement of molecules that are other than water. Now in osmosis, water moves from low solute to higher solute concentration area. I'm running out of space. Now, if you remember, a solution consists of solvent, which is water, and solute. Right, that could be salt, sugar, uh, basically the molecules that you dissolve in water to make this a solution. Right? So water moves from low solute to high solute. So if you have two salt solutions, low solute would be, let's say, 10% sodium chloride. And the higher solute would be anything higher than 10%. So let's say 20%. So water would move from this lower salt concentration to a higher salt concentration. And that's basically how we can use salt to dry and preserve meat, right? Because the um, salt surrounding the meat, that's considered high, very high solute concentration, right? And then in the meat, that's lower solute. So in the meat itself, that's lower solute. So water moves from lower solute, which is the meat, to higher solute, which is the salt um, on the meat. And this is how salt can remove moisture from the meat and it dries meat, which can last longer. So this is an osmosis process, right? And water molecules move out of the cell, the cells of the tissues, the muscle tissues, from an area of a low salt, low solute concentration, basically, to high salt concentration. So C is the correct answer. Okay, one more question. This question is about potassium ion movement. And this is very true that cells um, tend to maintain a lower potassium ion concentration outside the cell and a higher potassium ion concentration inside the cell. Okay, now look at the movement. Um, potassium ions move from lower concentration to a higher concentration. And if you remember, that's what active transport is about, right? Things move against the concentration gradient from low to high. And in this process, energy is needed. 
And energy is provided by ATP, right? ATP is the energy currency in the cell. So when the cell needs energy to do something, the cell will break down ATP to release that energy. So you can think of ATP as something equivalent to energy. So this is the active transport and energy is used, right? And this energy is produced by ATP. So correct answer is B. All right, guys, that's the end of this lesson. Um, and it can feel a bit overwhelming because this lesson is mostly new and there's uh, some math, some calculation involved. But just, you know, take your time, do more exercise, more practice until you get comfortable with all those uh, units and you'll be okay. All right. Um, I hope this is uh, helpful and thank you for watching.